Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today Coco's Creator 3 was just released and I gotta say this release goes a huge step forward. So even if you checked out Coco's in the past, stick around. I'm sure this is going to impress you. So what you see in front of you, this is Coco's Creator 3. You're going to notice right away this is a 3D game engine. Of course, it is also a 2D game engine. Coco started life as a 2D engine and then with Coco's Creator 3 they added on the 3D functionality and now with the final 3.0 release, 2D and 3D are together in one place in glorious harmony. Now, you'll notice right away the user interface is nice and clean. This actually probably provides 99 to 100% of what you need. Now, it used to be this guy just created uh, WebGL projects, but now it actually, they've got multiple rendering back ends, so you can use this for more and more sophisticated projects for sure. The nice thing is it is also free. Sadly, not open source. The underlying engine is open source. The editor that you see in front of you sadly is not. Uh, so let's go take a look around Coco's Creator 3, see if there is something in here to impress you and give you kind of a bit of a quick overview of how everything works. Now you'll start over here in the hierarchy. This is a node-based engine. So here we got the root of our node, which is a scene. You have multiple scenes to make up your game. I can create a new node by clicking here. We could have it create a completely empty node and we could kind of compose things from scratch. Or you see here, we've got more compound nodes. For 3Ds, we've got basic primitives. So again, if I wanted to create a cone in my world, I could create a cone. And there it is. Very exciting. Oh, I clicked off. All right. Move that around over here. Now, that cone itself uh, is made up of components. So in this case, it is a node, which means it's got 3D positional information. And it's got a material attached to it, like so. So we could switch out or change out that material. So if I have another material over here, let's see if I actually have a material. I, I should have a material to work with. OK, one second. By the way, over here, you can filter down to what you're wanting. So this is all of the assets that go together to make up your scene. So in this case, I want a material. I can come over here, I can do a filter out like so, and say limit it to just types cc.material. So now I'm gonna get just my materials over here. Let's add a shield material on top of, and there you see, it's on top. So now I could do a stone instead, and there you see how that works. Any of these things also, we can go ahead. So that stone material, I could open it up. We can edit it over here. There's a full blown, um, Editor for all materials for here. You've got a number of different effects built in. Uh, so it's using a tune shader right now. And you can see it's got a nice tune shading going on. Most of the scene is using a tune shader, as you can tell. Uh, you got a lot of control over it, how it goes through the rendering pipeline. Speaking of which, you've also got the ability, so let me just turn my filtering off. Um, I can come down here, creating asset types. We can actually even create render pipeline uh, scripts that pop into the system. Speaking of scripts, scripts appear just like anything else as components. You can create new ones in TypeScript, basically just select here and start creating TypeScript. You've got direct Visual Studio code integration. So your editing can be real time, one-to-one -one tieback, no needs to synchronize or import or anything like that. You've also got the ability to bring in animations over here, or we can drop in and bring in, uh, say, an FBX file. There's a new and improved FBX importer. So you bring in a 3D guide, like what this soldier is powered by. Somewhere behind the scenes, this animation is probably an imported FBX file. Now you're gonna notice also something, it is green. That's because these guys here, this grass, the soldier, the islands, they are all prefabs, which is just basically a collection of assembled nodes. So you can see this, this island is made out of various different trees and so on. Uh, you can go ahead and put things together and save them as prefabs. So if you want to quickly instantiate them some other way, uh, they kind of come in as a single entity. So you do have full prefab support going on here. As I mentioned earlier on, so your hierarchy of nodes to make up your scene, and you've got a number of different components. So here, these are the basic things that you make a node out of. So for example, in 2D, we've got things like uh, graphic uh, or a sprite to draw on screen, uh, UI stuff and so on. We've got animation tools, audio tools. So you can put an audio source and an audio listener into your scene. Uh, you've got special effects stuff like particle systems and so on. Uh, even have tiled map support now uh, with the release of 3.0. There is support for maps created in the 2D tiled level editor. And so on. So things are basically composed of nodes made up of components. So basically these prefabs are actually just pre-configured for you. So for example, if I wanted to create a particle system, I could come in here and go 3D, oh sorry, it's effects, particle system. But I can also do the same thing by going here, empty node, like so, create my new node there in my scene, like so. I could go ahead and probably call it my party system. All right, so there's my particle system right there in the world. You notice right now, it is just an empty node and that could be fine. You could actually attach a script to it. Sometimes you just want empty nodes in the scene. You could have that uh, be the thing that controls your game level or whatever. But what I'm going to do now is add a component to it, go to effects, 
and we'll go to particle system. Now you see, we now have a particle system in the world. Oops, I selected the wrong thing. All right, where did party go? All right, my party system. All right, let's move that around. So there you see, particle system in the world, and then we can go ahead and start configuring values for it. You see they interact real time. Uh, we got a number of controls over this particular particle system. So for example, you, you can change the, the trail mode on it, and then each one of these has a number of settings here. So I could go, all right, start with red, and then turn to blue, because why not? All right, there you see, so as it trails over time, and then you can control basically the, the various different values for your particle system. Your particle systems are pretty elaborate. There's quite a bit you can do with them there. And yeah, so you basically can build things out by uh, creating them over here as prefab or pre-constructed objects, or you can come over here and start building them out of components. So for example, if I also wanted to add a light to my particle system, I could come down here, I go to lights, and I could add a, um, you know, let's do a spherical light attached to it. So there you see our particle system now has a light attached. You're gonna see it's interacting with this guy in the background immediately. And then you've got the particle system going on and you can keep stringing things together. And then of course I could add my own script as a, um, a TypeScript script would be available here. So if I create a script, it will show up in its own category here. And then we can attach logic to our objects. And that's kind of how things are organized together. Now there are a number of other tools in here as well. You're gonna notice again, we have real-time lighting. The lighting uses uh, real, so luminous power, you got, control over how it's done, range and so on, it uses a full PBR based rendering workflow. Um, you're gonna notice we got this little guy over here, uh, animation component. So there's no animation component attached to this guy. I'd have to add one in, but instead we'll go ahead and we'll select our soldier. And you see here we can enter and exit animation mode. So now I'm gonna go here. We are in animation mode with this guy. That's just because there was an animation already attached to this guy, it's, right? So, and now what I could do is actually animate anything in the scene. So I could go back to my old cone right here and I could move it around. Cause you'll see here I got soldier, root node, and all the pieces that go together for it. So if I go ahead and select the root node, you're gonna see here, I've got control over all the various different properties here. And for each one of these things, see so our, our, uh, our skeleton is animated here over time. So you can see here, take one, that's the animation clip here, and we can preview it in action there. So you got the ability to create keyframe and animate anything at all in the scene, any value that's up here, you can animate over time. So if I wanted to animate the X value of this guy over time, I could go ahead and we can basically yeah, let's, let's stop that guy. Um, we can start creating keys for this guy. Let me just, all right, come on. Click, right click. Ah, anyways, you can uh, create keyframes in it. it. It's a control up here. It's one of these values right here, but you can keyframe any property that is exposed out it and basically animate anything, which is pretty nice. Another thing that is new here, let me just zoom out a little bit. Again, you can see performance is quite solid. Uh, I, oh, I gotta leave animation mode. So let's exit out of animation mode. So what I could do now, let's create a new node in our world. You'll notice this bottom one here is train. So we've got a new train system in place. Click a train, there you see it created for it. I come down here to my assets. I should probably put this in a folder of some kind, but nah. All right, so there we go. We just created a new train asset, train 02. I'll select my train right here. Here is how assets are applied. I guess we did this earlier with the texture as well. So there you see now there is a train attached to this guy. New property popped up down here. So we can go ahead and start sculpting. So here you see we're pulling out like so. Oh, something went wrong. One sec. Okay, that was my bad. I have somehow deselected it. So here you see we can pull things up. We can also switch here to sunken. Come on. Sunken, there we go. And we can go down in the other direction or we can do smooth and we can start smoothing out shapes. So you got a train editor built in here as well. I can go ahead and paint. So we could add a new layer. So we got a grass layer to so boom, default in. Add a new layer on top. We'll grab this guy right here. We'll bring in uh, some kind of a material for it, which by the way, all of your assets are uh, sortable down here too. So I can say here, I wanna limit this to just material objects. There you see. So there's the grass that was already applied on our terrain. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the here, we'll drop the stone in. All right, so there we go. Train two, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, well, we can select this way as well. I can't, don't know why I can't pick stone. Ah, we'll paint with sky. All right, there you go. So now we've got uh, the ability to paint. Our train. So you can have multiple layers, multiple things. So you can obviously have, you know, grass layer and then rock layer and so on and kind of paint and blend them together. Uh, you got control over the, the rendering workflow here. So we can do metallic roughness map tiling and so on. So this is the train editor that is built in. There is a ton of functionality in this engine. It's nice and streamlined and clean. Of course, if uh, TypeScript is not your thing, this engine probably isn't for you, but otherwise 
may actually be worth checking out. Now what we're going to do is check out the release notes for Cocos Creator 3. And I got to be honest here, there, uh, what's the word? There's a lot here. So we're going to skim it for the most part. Okay, so welcome to the Cocos Creator blog. Now we're going to take a look at is what is new in V3. So let's do the summary first. V3 uses a new future-oriented engine architecture, which will bring high-performance, data-oriented, and load-balanced renderers to the engine and seamlessly support Vulkan, Metal, and OpenGL ES multi-back and rendering. In the future, we also plan to support mobile VR, AR, and some of the desktop and console platforms. Before us is uh, a brief introduction to the core features of V3. So the big thing is before, they just had a WebGL back end, I believe. So this is going to give them a lot of flexibility. And they've been also, if you're building it for, so there's a metal back end, build it for iOS or Mac, and you're going to get good performance on those platforms. So to build it for desktop, you can use Vulkan and so on. So that's definitely nice. Um, so the editor got a ton of new features, including brand new interface, more concise and clear, resource system upgraded, enhanced support for super large projects, more efficient and reliable, code isolation between modules, pure message driven, more stable, extension system is completely modularized to welcome a more powerful plugin mechanism, uh, one click access to their services, a brand new prefab system, uh, including the ability to nest prefabs, which is always kind of nice, uh, improvements to the build system, Game view, which is a game running panel embedded in the editor. Developers can run the game directly in the editor without opening the browser preview. I don't know if I showed you on this particular take, but anything you want, you can come up here. So example, I can say, okay, browser mode, go ahead and run this. And here we are in the browser running it, which is pretty nice. Uh, so there is a panel built directly in now. So I can go back here and say, all right, game view, and it will run it in this panel like so. Mind you, it didn't, it didn't run, so I don't know if there's... I have to press play or do something to make that work. But anyways, there is that new new panel there. Powerful new extension system, uh, IPC messaging to communicate with other extensions if you wish. The animation editor, we saw that really quickly. It got a number of new features. You can see them all here. Again, I can't go into the level of detail or this video is going to be like three hours long. There is a ton new in this version three release. Uh, tool chain improvements, including uh, model, um, model preview. Uh, so you can select an FBX file, you import it and see it in action down over here so for example if i go here let's go here let's search for limit the type here to uh, mesh i think i want and then if i select one so shield soldier there nope soldier do you see the preview of the material i don't know why i'm not getting just a, uh, yeah, there you go so there you see the mesh in action and you preview it down there uh we got a new version of fbx importer uh support the import of gltf resources which is actually pretty nice support animation cutting provide mesh optimizer model import supports quantized joints weight we saw a train editor in action uh very nice if you want to draw train you got managed sculpt and painting also supports normal maps pbr materials and custom materials built in baking system for lights uh visual macro configuration supports 2.0 2.x project migration so there's a tool in place if you're using an older version to have it upgrade up and we got all kinds of new features to the underlying core engine which by the way is the open source bit uh, so the rendering system supports multiple backends as mentioned earlier on so we got metal vulcan and in addition to all the various different web gls gles2 gles3 so you've got um, your, you can deal with the graphics at, at kind of a higher level and it deals with the platform behind the scenes for you uh, API, okay, we'll kind of get into more details here. That Again, I don't want this video to be six hours long. Uh, PBR materials here, we got GPU instancing, global fog effects, uh, supports for various different texture, correction, um, compression systems, lighting, it's using a physically based lighting. Um, we have multi-light support on multiple passes, supports high performance flat shadows, using planar shadows, directional light, and spotlight dynamic shadows based on shadow maps. Uh, particle systems, number of different effects, as you saw here, number of different modules broken down here. Uh, Full-blown material system with uh, preview built in, uh, again, PBR-based materials, uh, 32 built in, uh, support more than 32 effect macro definitions, uh, Cocos effect compiler automatically removes invalid codes. So uh, effects resource panel now supports previewing the compiled shader code and supporting visual editing of each define of the shader and support material preview. Again, we now have tile map, 2D map support input. So if you create your 2D maps using tiled, you can import them directly in. Support for spine and dragon bones, uh, skeletal animation system. So you can bring in animated skeletons. This is for both FBX and GLTF resources, which is nice. Uh, scripting system embraces ES6 and TypeScript. So let's look, ES6. Okay, I'm confused. No, no. 
That's weird. Uh, Cocos Creator 3 has turned to type fully to TypeScript, and JavaScript is no longer supported in the project except for plug-in scripts in JavaScript or NPM modules. Okay, so your scripting is TypeScript only, uh, but it looks like your modules can still be done in JavaScript, and it supports ES6 in that particular case, or ECMA Script 6. So that is definitely, I, I, I naturally prefer TypeScript over JavaScript, and so I'm, I'm kind of down with that one. Uh, full UI system built in here. There are a number of different components here. I didn't really show you that, but if you come in here under UI components, you're going to see here you've got things like sliders, uh, buttons, widgets, and so on, uh, all built in for you. Also, we've got some views and layouts for doing automatic layouts, um, supports for sprite batching, uh, physics, there's a full physics system built in here uh, using Canon JS with physical simulations compiled into ASM WASM uh, version ammo.js. So there is full physics support built in there as well. And then we get into the detail changes and that's that's way into the weeds and we're, we're not going to go there. So you can see here there there is a lot in that particular release. So that is Cocos Creator 3. Uh, it is now available and, and ready and fully shipped. It's no longer a preview or a beta or anything else. If you want to go ahead and download it, it is available at cocos.com. Um, so just head on over to cocos.com and you will find Cocos Creator 3 is now a thing. Definitely a nice big release and I would definitely recommend checking it out. If you have not looked at Cocos Creator in a long time, you're going to be shocked by how much it has improved. It is just a nice, clean relatively simple uh, game engine. Um, and then again, the editor itself is not open source, but the framework behind it is. So if you need to extend it or whatever, you can do so. If you want to build your own project on top of what they've built here, uh, you can do that as well. Um, it's, just, it's just nice. So that's it. Uh, Cocos Creator 3 was just released. Have you checked out in the past? Are you going to check it out again? If so, if not, are you going to check it out? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.